finally, the last rule of a categorical syllogism. Basahin natin. In a syllogism, always follow the weaker premise in the conclusion. Ano ibig sabihin neto? Ang unang tanong dito, sir, ano yung ibig sabihin ng weaker premise? Okay, tignan natin dito. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng weaker premise? Alalakihan natin. Yan, bold. Kaya ano, what is a weaker premise? A premise is weak if the quality is particular. Ayan. Okay? A premise is also weak if the... I mean, the premise is weak if the quantity is particular. And it is also weak if the quality is negative. Yeah, negative. Ibig sabihin yan, pagka pinagkumpara mo ang dalawang propositions, ang isa ay affirmative at ang isa ay negative, weaker ang negative. Pagka pinagkumpara mo naman yung quantity ng dalawang propositions, yung isa ay universal, yung isa ay particular, weaker ang particular. So, kung ano yung mas mahinang proposition sa quantity man yan o sa quality, yun ang i-carry mo sa conclusion. So, ito yung halimbawa. So, no students are creative thinkers. Some students are athletes. Ergo, some athletes are not creative thinkers. Uh, pagtunan mo ng pansin itong dalawang propositions na yan. Yung major premise, no students are creative thinker. Malakihan natin para makita ninyo. Ayan. So, pagtunan nyo ng pansin itong dalawa. No students are creative thinkers. Some students are athletes. Sa dalawang yan, pag pinag-usapan natin yung quantity, ano ang mas mahina? Sa major premise, ano ba ang quantity niyan? Universal o particular? Okay, ang quantity niyan, universal. Because this is an e-proposition. Ngayon, yung minor premise, ano ang quantity nito? Particular. Di ba? Particular. Because of the signifier sum. Kaya tignan nyo yung conclusion, kineri niya yung quantity. Sum. Okay? Ngayon, pagdating sa quality, ano ang quality ng unang premise? Affirmative o negative? Obviously, negative because of the word no. I-compare mo yan sa minor premise, ang quality niyan ay affirmative. Kaya ibig sabihin, pagdating sa quality, mas mahina yung major premise na no students are creative thinkers because it is negative. Ano sinasabi ng rule number seven? Always follow the weaker premise in the conclusion. Pagdating sa quality, mas mahina yung major premise because of its uh, quality that is negative. Kaya makikita mo yung conclusion, negative din yan. Okay? So this is a good example of a uh, categorical syllogism. Now, the next example is this. Yan. All students are scholars. Some students are not critical thinkers. Ergo, all critical thinkers are scholars. Ngayon, pag-aralan natin mabuti. Okay? The, the major premise is universal and affirmative. The minor premise is particular and negative. But negative? Ayun yung nato, kitang kita. Tapos makikita mo yung conclusion, universal, affirmative. Oh, teka. Parang may mali. Oops, ano nangyari? Parang may mali dyan. Di ba? Kasi sabi natin, always follow the weaker premise of the conclusion. Let's talk about the quality first. The quality. Affirmative, negative, mas mahina ang negative, kaya dapat negative ang conclusion. Between these two, when it comes to quality, mas mahina yung minor premise. Kasi kita mo, nandito yung not. Diba? Ibig sabihin negative. Kaya dapat yung conclusion, 
negative din. Kaso makikita mo, all critical thinkers are scholars. Hindi negative yan eh. A proposition yan eh. Ang negative propositions ay E at O. Di ba? O, oh, edi mali na ito. Ngayon, pagdating sa quantity, ano ang mas mahina? Universal, particular. O, oh, mas mahina pa rin itong minor premise kasi ginamit niya itong modifier na sum. Tapos, makikita mo, all yung nandito. Eh, anong sabi ng rule number seven? Always follow the weaker premise and conclusion. So, dapat, palitan mo ito ng sum. Kasi, you should carry uh, the quantity of the weaker premise. Ngayon, pagka pinalitan mo ba yan, tama na? Hindi pa rin. Kasi, kailangan negative din ito. Kaya, gagawin mo, some critical thinkers are not scholars. Yan, magiging tama na. Pero pag yung original, kanina, mali. Okay, sana nakuha ninyo. Ulitin natin, always follow the weaker premise in the conclusion. Again, which is weaker when it comes to quantity? Quantity. Universal versus particular. Particular. Ayan. Pagdating sa quality, affirmative versus negative. Okay. Anong mas mahina sa quantity? Universal o particular? Ayan. Mas mahina ito. Di ba? Mas mahina yan. Sa quality, weaker din ang negative. Ayan. Kaya nga dito, sa unang example, no students are scholars. Yan yung no. Kaya dapat, i-carry mo rin yan. Negative din dapat. Negative din dapat. Tapos ito, pagdating sa quantity, yan yung weak. Diba? Kaya dapat, i-carry mo rin yan sa conclusion. Ayan. Ayan. Alright? Okay. Tama yan. Una example. Eh, pagdating dito, yung quantity niya, oh, ditignan mo. All. Okay? Eh, meron kang sum dito. O, oh, alin ang weaker? Yung all o sum? Oh, mas mahina yung sum. Kaya dapat, kaya dapat, sum ito. Eh, wala kang makitang sum eh. Di ba? Tapos, negative din to. Ayan. Nakikita mo ba yung dalawang yan dito sa conclusion? Hindi. Kaya para maging tama, gawin mong sum. Ayan. Gawin mong sum. Tapos, some critical thinkers are are not. Oh, mali yata yung pagkakalagay kanina ng ano. Oh. Ayan. Para maging tama. Di ba? All students are scholars. Some students are not critical thinkers. Ergo, some critical thinkers are not scholars. Ayan. Sana maliwanag ha. Alright, so natapos natin ang seven general rules of a categorical syllogism. Uh, sana may naintindihan kayo kahit papano. Okay, that ends our uh, lecture series, video series on the seven general rules of a categorical syllogism. I will try to upload uh, yung minsanan kung paano natin i -re recite o pag-aaralan ng isang categorical syllogism ng diretso from rule number one to rule number seven. Okay? Good luck and sana may nakuha kayo. Thank you very much.